There are a few molecules that have been linked to have a longevity effect, and one of them is the amino acid glycine. However, glycine's mechanism of action is not well established, and that's because there is a paradox in how glycine functions. One mechanism would typically be linked to worse longevity, and another to improved longevity. So what's going on here? Well, in longevity studies, which are performed in model organisms like this influential one released by the Interventions Testing Program, glycine supplementation to the diet improved the lifespan. We can actually see that evidenced here. Note the percent alive on the vertical axis. So the higher up the line is, the better. The horizontal axis is the length of time. So the further right the line goes, the better. It's tough to see the colors, so I'll point out which condition is which. As we can see, the glycine supplemented lived longer, confirmed statistically with a p-value well below 0.05. On average, about a 5% extension of lifespan. Now, keep in mind, we can't do these kinds of studies in humans unless we look at associative studies. So we're making some assumptions here that translates to humans, which is not always the case. Yet, as I mentioned, the mechanisms by which glycine enacts this longevity effect are incredibly confusing. Well, why? Well, one of the molecules, proteins, found inside of our cells is called mTOR. This mTOR protein is a master protein, meaning that it influences many cellular functions. It's been thought that elevated mTOR activity is linked to aging, disease, and reduced longevity. So it may make sense to reduce mTOR activity. Well, glycine is believed to do exactly that. This was mentioned in this first study that we just went over, but also mentioned in more detail in this study. Essentially, glycine removes mTOR activating molecules. <laughs> it's times like this where I genuinely feel like a nerd. Let me repeat that. mTOR activating molecules. <laughs> I'm talking about other amino acids like leucine, methionine, and others. To be clear, not all amino acids robustly activate mTOR, but certain ones do, and our focus falls on methionine. Methionine is converted inside your cells to S-adenosyl methionine, or SAM. SAM molecules bind to a protein called SAMTOR. I promise this isn't a uh, Dr. Seuss episode. It literally is called SAMTOR, which is different from mTOR. Once SAM binds to SAMTOR, it inhibits SAMTOR from inhibiting mTOR. Additionally, methionine binds another protein called PRMT, which activates mTOR. So through two intracellular mechanisms, methionine activates mTOR. Okay, so how does this have anything to do with glycine? Well, glycine molecules change the molecular structure of SAM by taking what are known as methyl groups off of SAM through an enzymatic reaction, meaning an enzyme is involved in the process called GNMT. I'm mentioning that specifically because genetic knockouts of GNMT leads to massive increases in cellular methionine and SAM, as well as increased rates of cancer and other diseases exactly what has been in line with overactive mTOR over time. Okay, so glycine reduces mTOR activity by removing methionine, SAM, from the cell, reducing the molecule that actually activates mTOR. Great, so where's the confusion? Well, <laughs> what if I told you that glycine activates mTOR with like a little minion, I'd also have the reaction of what? <laughs> Pretty confusing, isn't it? I mean, considering I just explained how glycine inactivates mTOR, how can it also do the opposite? Well, keep in mind that the answer isn't known, but the researchers do provide some explanation, including a molecule that is produced from glycine and its effects on autophagy. We'll get into that in just a minute. First, let's discuss this uh, paradox. Actually, first, I'm also gonna be covering some of the other preclinical benefits from glycine, as well as take a stab at dosing glycine for humans based on the scientific review that uh, we're discussing. If you're interested, I'll be covering that in the extended version of this video, which is part of the Physionic Insiders. If that isn't enticing for thee, 
I also release a monthly podcast on all the research for the month, applicable takeaways, product recommendations, and many, many more videos. The link is in the description if you care to join. I would love to have you aboard. Okay, the researchers point out that while glycine may activate mTOR, the magnitude of the activation is smaller than that of methionine. So potently reducing methionine concentration in the cell has such a potent effect that it overshadows the mTOR stimulating effect. So yes, in isolation, glycine may activate mTOR, but in the context of a cell filled with methionine, it has a net reduction in mTOR activation, which might imply its increased potency with increasing age. But that's not all. This feels like a infomercial. You know the ones where they just keep adding sweeteners to the deal? That's not all, folks. You get this vacuum attachment called the Super Sucker 9000 free. Did I mention it's free? Anyway, that's not all about glycine. When glycine is used to eliminate methionine, it is turned into a molecule called sarcosine by the GNMT enzyme that we've uh, been discussing earlier. So sarcosine is believed to induce autophagy, which is a system inside our cells wherein these vesicles encompass different components of the cell, especially dysfunctional components, and destroys them. While thinking of autophagy as only positive is a short-sighted view of autophagy. It's being described by the researchers as positive in this context, likely because it tends to be the opposite of mTOR activation, which is known to build and grow the cell while autophagy is a major degradation pathway. These mechanisms aren't even to mention the other effects that glycine has, like its important role in the production of the antioxidant glutathione, which robustly buffers the cell from incurring too much damage from damaging molecules like reactive oxygen species. So all in all, you can see why there's such confusion around the molecule. However, Regardless of the mechanisms, the evidence points to glycine being a net positive for longevity. In fact, you might be interested in more on its effects, which I discuss right here.